it's uh, uh, with your very in, uh, informative and presentations like deviating from different topics. So I hope this one also will give uh, attention to something very, very different. So whether we can use open source mapping tools for supporting vision impaired people for their navigation work. So I'm trying to, like this is part of a large project. I'm trying to present some part of it, specifically with, with what we are trying to do with open source tools. So I look at a few things, uh, like specifically what's my understanding as a person, how, how people navigate without vision. And because with that understanding, only we'll be able to help. So there are so many tools, but there's a gap with the, the actual usability of these things and uh, uh, the, uh, the tools. So I'll present things related to this with my understanding. And first, so what about going for a remote area, so unfamiliar area, finding your way inside a building? So maybe some of you got stuck even here finding this place if you are very new. So what about doing it without good vision? Because most of the time what happens is uh, even without thinking within a fraction of a second, we register everything outside uh, uh, in the environment and with that we build mental map and go with the flow. But with reduced vision, it's quite uh, difficult and challenging and it affects our mobility and orientation. So orientation in the sense so to know where we are, so with that so we can go from one place to another and the mobility of course like we have to uh, make sure that we don't hit certain things and we have enough space to travel and avoiding things. So in order to support that traditionally we have uh, different tools that white uh, can or the guide dog or human guides but there are many new coming uh, tools also to support such a thing. And when it comes to indoor, so we are look, specifically looking at window, indoor, it's uh, slightly different from outdoor navigation. Actually, it's unique because uh, it's just no roads or no such thing. It's like indoor environment. It's a uh, little bit clutter. And uh, so we are looking at how we can develop indoor navigation tools. And I'm specifically looking at uh, the optimum paths suitable for this specific category. And uh, when I'm did I went to before moving to the tools actually, so I try to understand how we walk with reduced vision. And uh, there are certain simple, very simple guidelines which we can use. Like uh, we may turn our body and just adjust our path, uh, just adjust our body. So if there's human clutter or something, but for people without uh, people without proper vision, it would be a little bit difficult. So need a little bit of space to use the white cane as well as if they're having a guide dog, more space required. And uh, then they use certain techniques like we may follow, say, middle of the corridor, but it's more preferable to use along the wall because they can do that wall trailing or maybe certain other things like shoreline. And even though we will not see I mean, with the reduced vision, we will not see that the uh, vibration come from its walls. These things help to maintain orientation. So better to, it's, it's very different from what we think more suitable, maybe for this special category. And uh, related to steps and elevators, a little bit more details, as well as uh, if you're using a uh, guide dog, then uh, elevator, escalator might be not something suitable. Some people train to use steps. So likewise, different preferences are there. And then there are certain more things like, uh, we may like to go in large spaces, but here it's become more complicated because in the MTM space, there's no place to make sure you are in the correct place to detect that. So avoiding large spaces, avoiding large crowds, and very importantly, following Landmarks, but these landmarks might be different from what we think about landmarks because it's not more towards visual things. Yes, uh, there are certain things they can we can detect with reduced vision, but more towards like even without thinking, like uh, smell coming from a coffee machine or the sound 
from a photocopy machine. So different things can be uh, used as landmarks. And we don't think about this thing very much when we map for like consider uh, also. And then there's very uh, important another thing. We generally think about vision impairment or blindness. It's like a one general category, but there are so many variation. So it's more towards like understanding their requirement and adapt because uh, there are people with reduced vision more than the people who are totally blind. Reduced vision is this effect, but they have the vision to, so we have to support them to make sure that they use that prop. And on top of that, we have to adjust. So then on with that guidelines, there are certain other orientation tension and mobility uh, related information which support uh, safe and efficient walking. So it's better to know about walking surface information like the nature, slope, steps. Steps in the sense it's not the staircase, so from one place, just one step and then going down, slope, this sort of thing. And whether there's a wall nearby or not, and the width of that area, and whether that is having a lot of open, uh, openings. And the lighting and contrast levels, so people with different uh, categories of vision impairment. So if there's uh, low contrast for the dilemma, uh, the second photographs, you can see if there's low contrast uh, between the walls and the floor, it might be difficult to find the, the place. Likewise, we, if we know this information, it would be more useful to provide better navigation instruction. And related to the doors and uh, obstacles and landmarks, you can see this information we require. But it's not just the position of the door. We require, like, OK, whether the door can be pushed or it has to be pulled outside. Pulled outside. And uh, sometimes it's like if the person is using a wheelchair also, then it's towards our side, then it's a big problem. So we have to know and the, uh, the specific location of the door handle. So this little bit particular information may be required. And obstacles and, of course, landmarks. So with this background, what we have? So if we consider about the real world, yes, we have in more environment, complex things, public spaces like supermarkets or university halls, these things. And from that, what we usually have is the floor plan or the drawings. So that's a minimal thing. Actually, what happens is with the floor plan, they build the environment. And then uh, with that, we, but it's not sufficient to create uh, optimum paths. So we need a little bit more data. So what we try to use is whether we can use of available open source tools to create this data and make use of them to find optimum paths. And uh, we select uh, this particular area that's SM based on Curtin University. I use uh, the building I usually work at because I'm very familiar because it's mo this is more towards understanding the requirements and what, whether we can use the tools. And I select these two and then proceed with mapping with Indo or SM. Uh, I wonder how many of you have tried indoor SIM? Yes, good. So, not many people, I think, have tried. But uh, yes, there are like few people do wonderful work. It's uh, beginning and going on, so I will not go to the detail, but it's a little bit uh, more steps than just using, uh, just use some, uh, say, editor and do the outside mapping. So we, I started, I, I tried different things, use uh, CAD files uh, and shape files, different methods, and finally started with, finally filled it better to start with PDF files and long way. So this is just about uh, JOSM and doing editing with help of different plugins. And then the corrections using other editors and use Android apps uh, also to do the correction and then process and trying to find paths. So it's still going on process and you can see some of the work. So when you start the work, it will be like this. And if, even if you map Indo data, you will not see them in OSM. It's uh, because Indo data in the sense, the not the building and in lots the levels. So we have, it's, it's not still supported. We can map, but you can't visualize. But uh, 
you can visualize those. So here you can use, see this in the JSON interface, the editing part, and you can visualize easily using Open Level Up. That's the best thing. So Open Level Up support selected layers, layers in the sense the levels, flow one, flow two, likewise, and visualize things with fine detail, as well as they support editing, so connecting to uh, JSON or ID editor, and then the mobile apps. And uh, with that, I did a little bit of editing. And uh, then same data downloaded, but uh, so downloaded to QGIS and started processing. But it's, uh, so you can see that green color things as the corridors and open spaces, that's the only area we have to concern at, with, the with the doors. But let you can see, so with that data, so with this exercise, what I understand. You can see the level of detail we require is a little bit more than level of detail needed by so other community. So maybe, so how we can max so, so there are like different tags, few things are available, but uh, how to map this thing, so open verandas and larger open areas, handrails, columns, so this thing, and landmarks. So it's not just the visual things, other thing how to add, and detail of doors and the corridors, this thing. And the, this is the set of tags available in OSM. You can see it's very limited. Uh, but it's, yes, we have to develop. So, and uh, that's like set of things we have to go to find detail. And uh, most of the time, it's not only the node data. We may require a little bit detail, say areas likewise. And uh, then it's not just the data from the data we have to move to navigable paths and optimum routes. So then for that, that's the highway equal, that highway tags, I don't think that's the way forward. It, it makes no sense because there's no such thing. And we have to find our own indoor navigation related route information, some subcategory likewise. And you can see it's uh, related to that thing. We, that's the main challenge we have. And indoor mapping itself is very different and kind of challenging as well. And with this, I finish. Okay. <laughs> uh, so what I understood is we can use indoor SIM. And uh, there are some editors like inEditor for which support indoor GML. It's more towards indoor navigation specifically. And more and more community engagement I have to share. It, then only we can do some useful work. Okay, thank you, Celeste.